Thank you for joining us for another power-packed message from Dr. Miles Monroe, provided by Monroe Global Incorporated and MonroeGlobal.com. We transform followers into leaders and leaders into agents of change. We hope that this message is a blessing to you as you advance your life and discover your purpose. Now, let's go into the message. Our focus today on this session is understanding kingdom law and righteousness. Understanding kingdom law and righteousness. Say that with me. Understanding kingdom law and righteousness. I want to focus today on a word that does not exist in democracy. It is the word obedience. You don't obey prime ministers. You don't obey presidents. But you obey kings. Jesus Christ is not a president. He is not a prime minister. You don't negotiate with him. Kings require obedience. I'm talking about righteous kings. I want to focus today on the power of obedience and alignment. Write those words down, please. Obedience and alignment. I mentioned to you in our last session about success. I want to quickly remind you of those principles. I am convinced that every human being was created by God to be successful. So failure is a choice. Secondly, I believe that success is predictable. That means you can decide to be a success. Thirdly, I am convinced that failure is predictable. People fail because they make decisions that lead them to failure. They violate basic laws. Fourthly, I am convinced that life is designed to be successful. God never created anything to fail. So if anything fails, it's because it must have violated something in God's system. God is more committed to your success than you are. Why? Because your success is good for his reputation. Anyone who makes a product that doesn't work is embarrassed by that product especially if their name is on that product. And so God wants you to succeed for his own sake, not just for yours. That means that your failure brings God great sadness. Success, therefore, is built into creation. Success is actually automatic. The only difficulty is you have to know its laws. The secret to success is understanding the laws of success. This term, law, is important. And I've come to a conclusion that laws were given to guarantee success. As we flew back yesterday from the beautiful city of Chattanooga, Tennessee, our pilots took up took us up to 42,000 feet, which is one of the highest levels you can fly. And we were up there for about an hour and a half, and I noticed that the pilot wasn't doing anything except looking at the gauges. He, had, he was not controlling anything with his hands. He was just looking at gauges. And once in a while, he'll just turn a little knob and touch something. And I was intrigued, and I and I wondered, how can this aircraft find its way to the Bahamas and the pilot doesn't steer it? The captain said to me that before you leave the ground, you get your coordinates, you get your frequency, and you obey the laws of the FAA. That's the federal Aviation Association, which controls all flights traveling over the United States. He said, and all I do is put in the codes 
and I relax. The aircraft picks up direct signals based on the laws and it turns by itself. I don't touch it, it just turns by itself. It picks up the coordinates and the laws that are built into the system automatically takes the aircraft directly to the airport in the Bahamas. He says, all we do is land it. And I realize success is built in. But first you got to know the coordinates and then submit to the FAA. You do what the tower says. I am sure the pilots in here today, we've got a few of them. Uh, Pastor Roll is a captain for years. He'll tell you that there's one thing captains do. They obey. Am I right, Pastor Roll? Big words that pilots must learn. You never argue with the tower. If they say, turn three degrees to the left, I think you better should. <laughs> Why? Because they know the big picture. They see that aircraft coming right toward you, but you can't see it. Obedience prevents collision. And when you line up with the laws, you put yourself in an order. And that's what I want to talk about regarding righteousness. The captain said to me, when you get your flight plan before you leave the ground, they give you your coordinates, which are numbers you put into the computer, and the computer sets your entire route based on the laws they give you through the FAA to obey. And he says, once you get the coordinates, they have 3,000 aircrafts in the air at the same time and none colliding. He said, because each one is placed in their order. There are aircrafts flying over you all the time, flying under you all the time. You never see them because they got to stay in their order. What causes collision is if an aircraft does anything that changes its order and it enters another person's space, there is destruction. So the key to safety in life is finding order. Success in life is a part of order. And I want to talk about order. Please make notes here. Number one, the power of law and order. Creation was designed to function on laws and keep order. Laws keep order. When we talk about an orderly country, you cannot have order without laws. That leads me to number two. Wherever there is disorder, there is the absence or violation of law. Wherever there is disorder, there is the absence of or the violation of laws. So if you see a country disorderly, it's because someone is violating the laws of that country. If there is disorder in your physical body, there's some law you perhaps are violating. If there's disorder in your financial life, there must be some laws you are violating or you are absent in the knowledge of. The Bible says my people are destroyed not because of the devil, but because of a lack of knowledge. I think the question is knowledge of what? It is the laws of God. That leads to number three. Disorder always precedes destruction. Anyone that you see failing in anything, you can guarantee, you can trace it back to somewhere where they violated some basic laws. You see a young man who you knew in school walking along the street 
and he is completely disoriented because of drug abuse if you trace it back in his life there was some point where he started disobeying the law and now we have a destructive life wandering the streets if your marriage falls apart it could be directly traced back to some disorder in that relationship someone in that relationship violated basic laws where there's trust commitment loyalty or faithfulness someone violated something and you see destruction that leads me to number four please write this down the key to order is law order brings success so you want to know what brings order order is a product of law and that leads to point number five the key to success in life is not just knowing the laws but submission and obedience to law if I never teach you anything may it be this one point right here if you want to be successful in God's creation in God's kingdom these important principles are necessary you must submit to law and obey laws and God will give you success anyone anywhere in the world who violates this basic principle can guarantee destruction law is not optional it's necessary but you got to submit to law for it to be your protector laws never destroy they protect violation of law is self-destruction that leads me to point number six disobedience produces disorder say that with me disobedience produces disorder say it again disobedience produces disorder when there is any manifestation of disorder there is disobedience present when you disobey law you create disorder which creates destruction can you imagine a pilot piloting the aircraft you are in and he decides to create his own frequency <laughs> and he decides to go on his own altitude I think life is too simple for us we complicate it to impress people <laughs> if you obey law you are wise and I say to all of you here and the millions who are watching this program and will see this on videos around the world on YouTube that your life is only as successful as the laws you submit to disobedience guarantees disorder and disorder guarantees collision your life falls apart so I beg you then to consider what I'm going to say in this next segment the priority of law you know God's purpose and plan is very simple God's desire was to colonize earth with the nation of heaven God's wanted to fill the earth with the country of heaven in other words the nation of God is called the kingdom of heaven and his principal purpose was to transfer and establish his heavenly kingdom on earth as a country Matthew 4 verse 17 Jesus declared the design of God he said repent for the kingdom of heaven has arrived on earth everybody say kingdom a kingdom is a country now why is this important what I'm gonna say is gonna be critical for you to understand as a person who lives in a country I'm gonna show you how simple it is to destroy your country or to protect your country it's very simple I'm gonna to explain to you all the problems in our country right now I'm gonna show you the solution to them as well the reason why nations fall apart is because those nations violate the fundamentals 
and what God wanted to do, if you're going to have a nation, you must accept this fact that all nations are built on law. So when Jesus said that he wants to bring the kingdom of God on earth, what he's basically saying is he wants to restore to earth heavenly laws because nations are built on law. Matthew chapter 6 verse 10, he says, Our Father who is in heaven, holy is your name. Let your kingdom come and your will be done. Where? On earth. How? as it is in heaven. I want to give you a list to write down. Six things to write down. I call this national order. National order. First of all, all nations are built on law. Write that down. Nations depend on law to keep national order. Laws are the heart of of a nation. Laws are the, the skeleton of a nation. Your body is held up by your skeletal frame, your bones. That's what keeps you upright, is your skeletal frame, your bones. The nation's skeleton is law. If you remove law, the nation collapses. So please write this down. Number one, these are not on the board. Number one, law guarantees national safety. National safety. The reason why you get bars on your window right now at your home and five locks on the front door is because nationally you don't feel safe. Why? Because there are law-breaking citizens. Number two, law guarantees national security. National security, write that down. Laws guarantee national security because when people obey the law, you feel nationally secure. Not just as a community, but I'm talking about internationally. Investors choose countries to invest in where they feel safe. Not only personally as humans, but they feel that their money is safe. Case in point, if you got a $10 million investment you want to make in a country, first you want to know if the government leaders are not going to desire some kickbacks. Why? Violating the law of honesty. Bribery. So people start withholding their money because you violate the simple law of honesty with people's money. One of the reasons why investors come to the Bahamas is because we have not yet been completely corrupted in our political system. I know there's a smile on faces. That's why we got to pray that people in power already have money before they go in there. Because when you are desperate, there's temptation to compromise. If investors don't feel that you keep laws, just the laws of decent agreement. If you agree on certain things and you make it legal, then keep your agreement. And then I'll give you money to handle. So laws protect national security. Thirdly, Laws guarantee national prosperity. What did I say? Nations prosper because of laws. If people keep laws, then the nation will prosper not only from external investment, please hear me, but I have met so many local people in our own community who started a business with good intentions, and the first week they were open, they were robbed. Members of this church will tell you, they started a business on Monday, just opened it, dedicated it. On Tuesday, they got robbed. 
Now, does that encourage a person to keep business? You see, laws can destroy prosperity because entrepreneurs become nervous about trying their ideas in that environment. Now, if the locals are not safe, how can you invite investors from around the world to come and invest money in your community? Laws protect us and give us prosperity. There are nations in the Caribbean right now whose economies are broken, not because they lack money, but the corruption is so high. People are afraid to put money in the economy. Obedience to law attracts prosperity. So every time you stop at a red light, you're protecting our country. Every time you don't steal what doesn't belong to you, you're protecting the whole country. In other words, it's a national act, not a personal decision. So keeping laws is for national protection. That leads me to number four. Law guarantees national development. Law guarantees what? National development. <coughs> there are certain groups of people in the world who are known for corruption. And wherever they go, they have difficulty getting people to invest with them. And you, you may know some of these groups of people. And, you know, your, your culture can become a law-breaking culture where people don't trust you with their resources anymore and it causes you to actually become poor you see when you obey law it attracts development all of us in the Bahamas here are proud of the developments that we have taken place in our country over the past 10-15 years we have foreigners who've invested billions of dollars in the Bahamas, and we take that for granted sometime. And I remember speaking to the president of one of the chief hotels here who invited me to do a seminar for the staff because he said he wanted me to address the issues of pil pilfering, pil pilfering, pilfering, yes, which means teething. It's a big word for that, okay? And he said, he sat me in his office first, locked the door, and he said, I want to tell you something. He told me horror stories. And he began to list the problems they were facing from people violating basic laws within the organization, stealing resources. He said, and here are the figures. And he told me and showed me on paper how much it cost that year in lost revenue and he said you know we're not sure how long we can stay here because if we can't every time we make a profit we lost it on the back end then we really have difficulty deciding where we're going to stay here my point is this if you violate law you can drive development away from your country if people know that you will obey laws they will trust you with their resources. I wonder if God may be withholding wealth from you now because he's observed you for the last 14, 15, 20 years abuse law. He gave you 100 bucks, you don't give him 10 back. <laughs> you know why God made tithing a law? Just to test you. He don't need your money. He want to see if you could obey just 10%. And we keep telling God, uh, trust me. That's a bend down statement. I can trust me $10 this, this week. I can, I can double up next week. God, you've been doubling for the last 10 years. I, 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 how can I trust you with a million if you can't even manage 10? So it's not the amount, it's the principle he's after. Can you keep just a basic law? Laws bring development. They attract development. And number five, 
Law guarantees national pride. National pride. When people keep laws, a sense of pride enters their life. I want to always be proud to say God lives in the Bahamas and all that implies. I want to be able to say that when you come here, the people that sell you things on the beach don't curse at you. They keep the laws of decency and respect for visitors. Basic laws. They don't up the price because you are a foreigner. Basic laws. Laws of conscience. Laws of not spitting in the man's soup because he told you to take it back. Because it didn't taste right. And don't smile now. I know it happened. You work in the kitchen is what I'm talking about. See, God watches every secret. And he knows what to trust you and not trust you with. And God will take things from you if you violate law. Ladies and gentlemen, are you proud of your family? Are you proud of yourself? How you've kept law? How you've not taken that thing that you could have taken? Are we proud of ourselves as a people? Where we are upstanding, honest people. It, uh, are you known for being a, 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 a law-abiding people? Are we proud to say we are Bahamians or Jamaicans or Haitians or Barbadians? Are we proud to say it? Or are you ashamed to say you are from a certain country? It brings a sense of pride when you keep law. And number six, law guarantees national wealth. Not just personal wealth in God, national wealth. When you keep laws, you attract national wealth. People trust you with their wealth. You know, the Bahamas was known as one of the banking centers of the world, especially offshore banks and trust companies. They dumped their monies here by the billions of dollars for the last 30, 40 years because somehow they felt that the environment here was safe because there were laws that were kept. When you start breaking those laws, people start withdrawing their wealth. Now, if man does that, what do you think about God? You start violating laws, God start drawing stuff back. The Bible says, no good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. That's the word for righteously. I put it to you, my friends, that God wants us to keep laws. So when Adam fell, it's a very important point to write down, Adam was simply disobedient to law. Can you imagine that? The fall of man was simply a human disobeying a law. Law destroyed the human race. <laughs> the Bible says by one man's disobedience, not by one man's strategy, not by one man's army, by one man's disobedience, death came upon all humans, it says. In other words, disobedience to law caused the whole human race to fall. Then that means then that if disobedience to law caused the fall, then the only way to fix it, to restore it, is what? Restoration of law. So Jesus Christ came to earth not to bring a religion, he came to bring back national law from a country that was violated. He came back to restore the kingdom laws of heaven to earth. That's what this entire thing is about. This Bible is called the law of God. Not the suggestions of God, not the emotions of God. This is not the devotions of God. This is called the laws of God. And we read this morning when that young man asked Jesus Christ a question. How can I have eternal life, real life. Christ says, keep the laws. You know, he didn't say pray. We like to pray, don't we? You got a problem? Pray. No. Correct the laws you're disobeying. Boy, my, my, my wife, she, she just caused me trouble. Really? Let's pray. No, you don't need prayer. 
You need to find out the laws you ain't obeying in the home. Because her action is a reflection of what you're doing or not doing. In other words, we love to pray when in fact we need to do. Ladies and gentlemen, me you have not always. People die every day. I don't plan to immediately, but there's a possibility. Please listen to what I'm saying. If you want to succeed in the next 10 months, reconsider the laws of God. Start lining up your life with the laws of God. As a matter of fact, here's something I wrote down last night. Grace was provided to restore law, not to replace it. Religious people have used grace to disobey law. We actually think that Jesus came to replace law with grace. That's why we are failing while we're singing. <laughs> we worship in our poverty. We worship in our pain and our sicknesses. We worship in our distress and frustration because somehow we believe that we have grace instead of law. But just in case you think that, let me read what Jesus said himself about that. Matthew 5, 17, at the beginning of his ministry, which is our scripture for the whole year. He says, do not think that I have come to destroy or abolish the law. Now, why, does he, why does, does he have to say that? Because he knew we would think. Don't forget those two words at the beginning. Do not think those three words. Because he knew that developed a theology later that would say law is bad. Don't get under the law. Don't get under the legal law. I mean, and, and, and you begin to become afraid of law. And Christ said, now before I get started, let me just clear the air. I did not come to destroy the law, nor the prophets who spoke them. In other words, here's the saying, I'm a New Testament Christian. What you mean by that is the old prophets don't affect me anymore. Christ said, wait a minute. I didn't come to destroy the law, nor the ones who quoted it. There is no such thing as a New Testament believer. There's a believer who believes in the whole law of God. You know, I stress to you this. He said, I tell you the truth. I did not come to destroy the law, but to what? Fulfill the law. Fulfill means to enforce, to establish to put the spirit back into it to give you the meaning of it why I tell you the truth he says I love it until heaven and earth passes away not one stroke of the pen of the law will be removed don't cancel my laws ladies and gentlemen I strongly want to impress you with this that is when he said he came to fulfill the Hebrew word he used is very very beautiful it has a multiplicity of meanings I came to enforce explain I came to restore I came to to demonstrate the law Jesus Christ obeyed every law he wrote for you he obeyed them himself he loved his enemies his best friends were sinners. He forgave those who crucified him. Such law. The Bible says, love those who hate you. Did he do that? Yes. Do good to those who despitefully use you. Did he do that? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The law says, give to the poor. Did he feed them? 5,000 of them, free fish and bread. It's so important to remember he didn't come to remove the law. 
he came to establish it uh, can I say this that citizenship is the right to obey laws when you receive citizenship in a country they're giving you the responsibility of obeying the laws of the country so this is why citizenship is not, should not be taken lightly not only do you get the benefits from citizenship you also get the responsibility of citizenship and if you disobey the law they take you out of the community put you in a place called prison why you violated the right to remain in the community prisoners are simply people who break and violate the law and they negate their right to be in the community they can't benefit from being free every time I think of the law I think about this guy his name is Moses what a guy I wanted to remind you basically of this grace issue I gave you this last week and the Holy Spirit told me to give it to you again John chapter 1 verse 17 it says for the law was given through Moses but grace and truth came through who Jesus Christ now grace means the ability truth means original meaning Moses gave you the law I came to give you the ability to keep it and to restore the meaning of it he says I came to explain what Moses told you because I told Moses what to tell you my laws haven't changed so we are not free from law we are free to obey the law grace comes to give us capabilities for obedience you cannot obey God's law without God's help so God provided the grace for you to keep the laws again I'm going to define the law in the next couple of Sundays because the law is a very confusing word for most people because of our theological confusion when I use the word law I'm not referring to the rituals of religion I'm not talking about all those customs that people take you through and give you heavy weights to carry that Jesus was against I'm talking about God's simple laws of nature spiritual laws of the world that you're supposed to obey if you obey them you live and succeed can you imagine a pilot saying to the tower I've been flying for 50 years now I've outgrown you all I'm more experienced than you all are now I know how to fly this thing without your help I think you would find a lot of collisions in the world uh, sometimes we think that way about God you know you know I've been walking with God so long now I can walk without him God's laws never change God's law is so prioritized in the mind of Jesus that he said these words if anyone breaks one of the least of these commandments Matthew 5 verse 19 if anyone breaks the least of these laws and teaches others to do the same will be called what least in the kingdom of heaven but whoever practices and teaches these commandments and laws will be called what great in the kingdom of heaven for I tell you that unless your righteousness does what surpass that of who the Pharisees and teachers of the law you will certainly not enter kingdom lifestyle kingdom living now this last statement we're gonna deal with this in detail because I think later on you can explain what he means but this is deep let me just say it for just for kind of a preview the last statement means unless the laws you obey are beyond the rituals of religion like the Pharisees you can't experience kingdom life in other words religion will never give you kingdom living trying to do all these rituals and by the way the, the the Pharisees and scribes they ended up with over 669 little laws that they told you to keep you can't even remember them they were so in bondage I'm not talking about religion I'm talking about national life in a country called heaven if you obey the laws he says then you will be called great and if you teach others to do it you'll be called great in the kingdom of God I assume that great means that God gonna take care of you as well because you're doing his will make a note of this please the only two priorities that God ever gave man on his agenda very simple priorities is found in Matthew chapter 
6 verse 33 only two things Christ said we should think about one seek first the kingdom of God and then his righteousness and everything else he says comes to you automatically I remember I told you that success is automatic yeah he ties automation in life to two things kingdom country righteousness that's the trick <laughs> that's the trick he said don't just enter the country even though that's wonderful seek that first but once you get in the country he says now you need righteousness don't just become a citizen even though that's wonderful he said but you need righteousness so the two things you must focus on for the rest of your life is these two things this is what I'm living on right now until I die two things I'm concerned about in life that's all only two things one the kingdom of God and two righteousness that's it he said everything else will be added to you this chapter came about when they talked about what food and clothes and car and house they were concerned about how they're gonna live and he says look stop worrying about those things just line up with two things the kingdom and righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you all right let me give you this quickly before we close here look at Matthew chapter 5 verse 6 blessed are those who hunger and thirst for what righteousness why for they will be filled with everything they need notice he said you must hunger for something you don't think about too much hunger for righteousness hunger means desire passionately and you'll be filled look at this verse Matthew 5 10 it says blessed are those who are what persecuted because of righteousness sake why because to them belongs kingdom living now two things going on here he says desire it but when you desire it you can develop enemies <laughs> wow ladies and gentlemen when you decide to be righteous you will create opposition because the whole world is going down the river in one direction you decide to turn and swim upstream and the pressure is natural are you all with me no you, you got to get this persecution is not someone scheming to kill you or destroy you persecution is just normal because you go in an opposite direction it is the tide coming against you so don't consider it any strange thing when you're persecuted now don't get me wrong I got to define persecution for some of your people some of the things that we create problems is not persecution it's our stupidity <laughs> persecution is natural opposition to your obedience to God I repeat persecution is your natural opposition to your obedience to God you don't look for persecution it's automatically he says blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness stake stake because theirs is the kingdom of God if you decide to live in the kingdom and be righteous then opposition is normal here's why this is important here first he says seek the kingdom of God first you know the word kingdom means rather and it means seek God's government God's rulership God's dominion over earth seek God's will executed on earth seek God's jurisdiction seek God's heavenly influence on earth and seek God's administration seeking the kingdom of God is that list write that down he says seek that first seek to be under God's government God's jurisdiction God's rulership God's dominion God's will and God's administration it's a country seek to live under that country's government seek that first he says so the first command of Jesus Christ is to get under God's country not a religion under a country now the second part then is as equal as the first seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness so I want to
throw, throw it in very quick. This is what I call priority number two. Priority number one is the kingdom. Priority number two is righteousness. Here's the trick. What is righteousness? The word. Got to write fast on this one because we're going to make you good students on this one. I did the research for you and took the words directly from the Hebrew and the Greek. So you can learn a little bit of that so no, so no one can fool you, okay? The word righteousness got nothing to do with dressing with long dress, wearing a cross around your neck, swinging incense, or not wearing makeup, or not putting on lipstick, or not wearing jewelry. Nothing to do with it. Let me show you what the word means. It simply means those who are upright, just, and righteous. This word, decaious, actually means to conform to God's laws. Decaious. The word also means uprightness. It means to be righteous. The, the Hebrew word, it's difficult to, trans, to, to announce the thing, it actually means, in legal terms, I like this one, conformity with legal corpus. Wow. Now all the lawyers sit up straight, right? I know that right away. Because this is a word all the lawyers had to learn when they went to school. Am I right, Brother Holly? Corpus. Huh? He's a lawyer. Okay. When you go to legal school, that's what you learn. You learn legal corpus. Now, corpus means the body of law. The word righteous means conformity with the legal corpus. It literally means to be under judicial process. Jeremiah uses the word exactly like it's written in Hebrew context. In other words, righteousness means... When you are under a king's law and receive his justice, the word justice means rights. So when a king is satisfied that you are keeping his laws, he give you your rights. Christ says, seek ye first the kingdom. Okay, you're under him. And then he says, now be righteous, conform to my laws, and everything you need will be added to you. I will see that you get what is rightfully yours without stress. You were never supposed to fight to make a living. But Adam did such a horrible job, we having to deal with thorns and thistles just to get bread. We got to sweat just to get bread. That's what the Bible says, because he violated law. And God sent Jesus Christ as our righteousness to put us back in alignment with God's law so that we can receive the justice of the king. Selah. Justice of the king. Do you know uh, why we had such a negative experience with most of our colonization? It's because the kings were not righteous what separates Jesus Christ from all the other kings of the earth is he is known as the righteous king he is the king who is lined up with God's corpus and God is love which means that nothing Christ will do will ever hurt you he is under love he is under the jurisdiction of love whatever he does is because of love the kingdoms that we were under Man, they went to some of our territory. They took away our gold, our silver, our tea, and took them back home. They raped the colonies. They kept the people oppressed. They made them subhumans. They made them slaves. These were not righteous kings. If they were righteous, they would immediately be under God's what? Corpus law. And God's first law concerning man is, they are all made in my image. How can you oppress God's image as a slave if he's equal to you? So righteous king is what makes Jesus a good king to be under. I would rather submit to Jesus Christ than any other leader in the world because he is a righteous judge. Clap, man. That's a good basic clap. This is why we follow only Jesus. You can't trust nobody. They're in it for something. But Christ is in it to give you something, not to take from you. 
For God so loved you, he gave. He is the righteous judge. The Bible says, I know my plans for you. Plans not to hurt you, not to harm you, but plans to prosper you and give you an expected end. What a good king to be under. This is why we can trust this king. A few scriptures to write down. Uh, before you do that, write this list down quickly. The word righteous, I got this from the research. The word righteous means straightness. Straightness. Now, what does straightness mean? When I did the reading on this in detail, it talks about alignment. It means right positioning or right standing with authority. Uh, straightness means you want to get straight again under an authority. To be righteous means you are standing in the right position to receive from an authority. It's protection, it's provisions, it's promises. You want to get in the right position. Therefore, Righteousness means alignment with law and authority. Write that down. Righteous means to be aligned properly with the law and authority. Seek ye first the kingdom, that's the country, and righteousness. Align yourself with its laws and its authority. In other words, it means to be in sync with law. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all you got to do for the rest of your life. Can you imagine? That's simple, eh? Seek to get in the country by being born of the Spirit and then seek and hunger just to keep the laws. And God says, everything else you need will be added to you. The word righteous also means to be in proper relationship with authority. It means to be in sync with authority. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, that's the kingdom of God, the country, and then seek to be in proper relationship with the king and his laws. If you, if you do that, he says, then you'll be under the legal, lawful alignment with authority. That's all I can teach you for the rest of my life. Get into the kingdom, keep the laws. Get into the kingdom, keep the laws. Listen, some of you in this country, in this audience today, were not born in the Bahamas. Okay? And you moved here, and you like the country. I had a thought this morning when I was in the shower. I get a lot of revelation in the shower. Water somehow it gives you revelation. And I had a revelation. The question came in the shower this morning. Here was the question. Why do people leave their countries? Think for a minute. And the answer exploded in my mind. Why are Haitians, for example, moving away from Haiti? Why are many Jamaicans leaving Jamaica? Why are many Nigerians or Africans leaving the continent? Why? Let me tell you why. Broken government. Broken governments. The system is broken. People don't want to leave their countries. That's too much hassle to uproot your three-year-old kid and put them on a boat or, or travel them through the airports. That's, that's too much work. You were born, you got roots there. That's hard work. But because the laws are so corrupt, you can't survive honestly in the environment. There's no justice present, no rights given. The folks that are do anything to get out from under this government. They change countries because the country stopped working. I have a question. What do you do, ready, when earth stops working? You need to find another country to get under. When Christ came to earth, his announcement was, change your mind. Why? Another country has come on the planet. You ain't got to suffer under your own anymore. You can enter the kingdom of heaven on earth, be under another government right here. That's the good news. So when you left your country, and you came to another country, whether it's America, whether it is the Bahamas. Oh, by the way, I wonder why many Bahamians don't leave the Bahamas. This is a very interesting question. A lot of other people leave their countries. Bahamians very rarely leave their country. 
Could it be because our country is working a little bit that we can actually make a living here and, and get some things done? Absolutely. And I warn our government, if you don't keep it that way, there'll also be an exodus here too. If people feel like they can't get a justice and, a, and get fairness here, they start leaving. Am I right? When you don't feel like you can get honest, fair justice in a place, you want to get out of there. Are we legally, lawfully aligned with God's authority? Okay, here's my point. You can and you decide to live here. The government says, okay, here's our standards for citizenship. You stay here for a certain time, whatever, whatever conditions are, and you fulfill those conditions. The day they call you in and says, okay, you are now qualified to become a citizen. Do you know what that means? You are no longer under the laws of the country you lived in. You are now under the laws of the country you are citizenship of. Which means now that you got to align yourself with the law of the new country. Have you ever wondered why governments... <laughs> when I went to Guyana uh, a few weeks ago, I was talking to the president. And the president said to me, just privately we're talking about ourselves. I said, what is your number one challenge with crime? He says... The United States is shipping back all of the criminals from Guyana. Let me say it slow. You'll miss that. I said, what's your number one challenge in crime? He said, the United States are taking all the Guyanese who break the law and shipping them back to our prisons. He said, they're doing the same thing for Jamaica. All the Jamaicans who they discovered are law-breaking citizens in America, they're shipping them back to Jamaica. Let me tell you what they mean by that. Whenever a country decides to accept you as a citizen, they do research on your background, don't they? They want to know whether you are a law-breaking citizen. Why? They don't want you to bring that culture in their country. And they will actually refuse your citizenship if you were known to be a felon. Now why? Because you're going to bring that culture in the new country. There are people who come into the kingdom of God and they're criminals. Oh Jesus, have mercy. They sit right among you, dress nice, mind never changed. And sometimes they're the ones who come want to borrow money every week. They're the ones who got a scheme all the time, want to work a scheme, you know, do this, buy this from me, I can, I can make you rich in two weeks, you know. They, they got to watch these people. They, they, they haven't been redeemed in their minds. They see the church as a good market for their ideas. We have to... Give me a, at least... Give me the right to ask you some questions. You, you and I have an obligation. If we come under the kingdom of heaven, we must align ourselves with his laws. Stop stealing. Stop bribing people. Stop manipulating people's weaknesses. 
abusing people. You know what I mean? It's, it's, we got to learn how to live according to the laws of the kingdom of God. Stop playing with women, playing with their minds. There's some fellows who are tagos, holly gullies, anointed holly gullies. But that's, a new, that's an old word, eh? Players. Scrubs. I don't know what y'all call them today. I don't know. They come around, they look holy, spiritual. They come to get something, man. And you know, they're not changing their minds. They come to prey on people. They're not aligning themselves with the laws of God. You used to be the children of darkness. He said, but now you are the children of light. Tell your neighbor I'm changed. I'm under different laws. So here's what righteousness means. Write this last point down. It means to be obedient to standards and regulations and laws of a nation. Righteousness. It means to be obedient to the standards, regulations, and laws of a nation. Every time you stop at a red light, you are being righteous to the Bahamas country. Every time you yield at a yield sign, you are being righteous in the country. Every time you pay your NIB, you're being righteous. Every time you pay your real property tax, you're being righteous in the country. That's what it means. You are aligning yourself with the laws. Now remember, wherever there's disobedience to law, there's disorder. Disorder brings what? Destruction. If everybody decides not to pay, pay NIB or pay real property tax, our country can have some problems. So obedience to the law protects the country. Disobedience destroys the country. And in the kingdom of heaven, it's the same way. We can't come into God's country and then bring our original laws with us. We got to submit to its laws. That's the point of this whole year. We got to realize that to live in the country, we got to obey the laws of the country to experience the benefits of the country. And God will profit us according to our obedience to Thank you once again for listening to this message as we hope that it has been a blessing to you. Our goal is to show you new paths and opportunities so that you can discover your purpose. It is your love, support, and partnership that makes Monroe Global possible. Please visit us online at www.monroeglobal.com for more product, partnership, or to join us at one of our live events around the world.